So what are four ways that you can ride the wave of change? So now that we have an understanding of the transition cycle, I've got four E's for you. Engage, empower, empathise and energise. So how do you engage when you're feeling a bit scared of this new situation? To involve oneself or become occupied, to participate. I love that word participate. If, if you're going to start a new season, you really need to be participating. And Peggy Holman has a book called Engaging Emergence, Turning Upheaval into Opportunity. And one of the tips that she gives us is she talks about our self-talk. So that first month when I was refusing to drive down my driveway, it was I can't. I'll hit a pole, I could run all the things that could go wrong. That was all I was focused on. But I needed to pull myself out of that into a positive line of thinking. How can I do it? What, what's the worst thing that can happen? Thankfully, that didn't happen. And even, how can I teach myself the skills I need to do that? So it's very important what language we use when we're in a new situation and what language we teach our children. I don't know if you've looked up the word can in the English dictionary, but it's, if you, the definition is knows how to. So often we just need to teach our children how to or break it up and just do the first step, help them to engage in the first step and teach them the next one and then the next one. There's a great movie called We Bought a Zoo. Has anyone seen that movie? And there's this lovely scene at the end of the movie the dad is outside this restaurant and he's reenacting for his children. So he's got his two children and he's, he's, he's outside the restaurant and he's pacing up and down and he's telling them the story. And he's saying, all I needed was three seconds of courage and I was going to go in, I was going to ask this woman out on a date. And so he summoned the three seconds of courage and he relives it and he walks in and it happened to be his, this lady happened to end up being his wife. And it was just that three seconds of courage. If he hadn't taken that three seconds of courage and engaged in that moment, he wouldn't have ended up meeting his wife. So that's a strategy that you can use. I often use that strategy. I just think, I only need three seconds of courage. I think Shelley's even heard me say that before. And often when it's just the engagement is the hardest bit and once you start, it all kind of flows from there. So that's something you can teach your children. And so it's always good to think about how you can model engagement to your children and how you can teach it to them as well. The next one is empowerment. To equip or supply with an ability to enable. So enabling is really important because it means that we're teaching our children or, our, or ourselves to do it for ourselves. Diana Sterling talks about this in her book, The Parent as Coach Approach. And she says, sometimes we rescue our children when we really need to support them to try new things. And it's really important for ourselves. I know for Andy, I asked him to rescue me for that first month. Often I'd say, oh, can you just back the, dri the car down the driveway for me? But I was never, it just disenabled me. It never helped me. It wasn't until I got in and learnt it for myself that I was empowered to do it. An illustration of this is just recently Jess uh, started studying in Sydney and I knew she'd have to get on a bus and a train and everything within me just wanted to rescue her. So I'm thinking, oh, I could drive her there and back. I'm thinking that's just so not realistic. And I had to think through, is she old enough? Think through... Is it a safe place? Think through, can she do it for herself? And all the answers I kept going was yes, yes, yes. So what I did, I went with her the first day and I taught her how to get on a bus, how to get on a train. I waited in Sydney, went back with her. And then the next day we thought she'd be right, but she wasn't quite okay with going by herself. So she said she had the idea, well, can dad come with me this time and I'll teach him? So she taught him how to get on the bus, what platform and all this sort of stuff. And then by the third day, she's off, ready to do it for herself. So it's really important that we empower ourselves, get whatever support we need and also that we empower our children so that they can become more and more self 
reliant. Now this is a video. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no. You want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. So empathy, I think, is really underestimated as a very important thing for us as humans, as parents, but also for our children. Often we want to jump in and solve it, but most of the time all they need from us or all we need, particularly if someone's going through a tough time, is someone to sit there and listen and just care with their mouth closed. And that's what empathy do, does. And I love this definition, the power of understanding and imaginatively entering into another person's feeling. So to empathise, what you're doing is actually almost coming alongside them and imagining what it would be like to be them right now. And that's when we can really connect with who they are and in that space in time. And it creates connection. And at the end of the day, when it comes to relationship, it's about creating connections, creating space to make sure you create connections with those you love, with your children and all those people that are important to you. And that's what empathy does. It builds connection. So the question is, who have you got in your support crew that is someone that can do that for you? And how can you do that for your children? And it's really important if kids are little or big, when, when their emotional reaction says that it's really tough, then we need to go with that. It might seem like a, a trivial little thing from, from our perspective, but if their reaction is like that, then often what they need is just someone to sit and listen. And often that solves the problem there and then because they've got that connection. And then the last one is energy. When we're going through a new season and we're going through a transition cycle, we really need energy because it can zap our energy. The newer the situation and the harder the situation, the more our energy can drain down. 
So how do you get the energy that you need? A cause to be alert and energetic. I mean, we live in a world that nearly every third person says, I'm so tired because there's a lot happening these days and we really need to work out how we need to re-energise and how our children need to re-energise. I want to talk about it in relation to introversion versus extroversion. And I'm only going to talk about it in relation to recharge. So typically, as a general rule, an extrovert gets recharged by being with a whole group of people. And that's how they recharge. And that works for them. An introvert typically gets recharged by being alone or being with just a one-on-one -on -one situation. And it's really important to work out how you recharge but also how your kids recharge. So an example of this is just recently Andy and I and the two kids went on a mission trip. We had a great time and we were pretty much working from with people from 7 in the morning to nearly 12 o'clock at night. And as the days went on, Andy and Jess were buzzing. They were just recharged city. They're extroverts. It was working really well for them. Josh and I, on the other hand, were introverts and our energy levels were going like this. And so Josh and I needed to take some time out. There was a little bit of time during the day and I'd go by myself and do something. I'd probably sleep. I think that's what I did. And Josh would go and watch a movie just for half an hour, an hour. And that's what we needed to recharge. It's not a better than thing, it's just a different than thing. So if you've got a child that's always going, what's next? What's next? Who can we see now? Then perhaps they're an extrovert. I've got some laughs over there. But if you've got a child always saying, can we just stay home? Can I just have some place, some time by myself? Then possibly they're an introvert. And it's really important. Life's pretty busy these days. We really need to work out how we recharge ourselves and how our kids need to be recharged. So that's the, the fourth one. So basically I've talked about transition being really important, that change is situational, transition is psychological. Then I've given you four ways that you can help embrace change, engage in the process, empower yourself and your children, energise and also one of the most, I think, important is to really empathise with your, with your kids and be that person that other people can talk to, but make sure you have those people too in your life. And I just want to leave you on this quote. The only way to make sense of change is to plunge into it, move with it and join the dance. Thank you. Thank you.